Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our WebDriver IO series, we are looking into the browser stack, how to run our test cases into the browser stack. We have seen how to run the test cases by using the GitHub Actions. And then the second thing that we have seen, how do we really take the GitHub Actions triggering but execute the test cases into the browser stack instead of in running into the GitHub server itself only. Okay, so there are two things that we wanted to discuss actually in this section. So one is that if you see that now this is what our the latest trigger right or the recent trigger which we did. Now if you see that there is everything is pretty much working fine no issues with this. But if you see that the here we were getting an error actually here. Okay, that it is saying the process completed with exit code is one and this error was due to one of my test cases got failed. Now this shouldn't be really giving an error, but this is an issue with the run command that which we are using actually. So we are using right npm run wdio. Now what happens this particular uh, command or this step that which we are using like if you go to here this is my workflow right like the one which I am using now if you see that this npm install is working fine but when I'm running this one now this gets the error actually from the fr from the assertion error because if my test case is failing it is it is treating it as a jasmine error because I'm using the jasmine framework and now because it is getting an error it blocks the rest of the steps so it is not performing this upload artifact here like if you here see here scroll down you see that the actions upload artifact didn't run actually you can see zero seconds and then it is disabled so and that's where i'm not getting the artifacts uh, like created but if you see here the lu report generated successfully means into the github server like when it was uh, downloading the github repo and running into it into the browser stack everything was working fine but because this action didn't perform that's why you are not getting the zip file here how to really mitigate this now the thing is that what we need to tell to this workflow here is that though this particular command is failed for some reason or it is throwing that error you continue executing the next step these steps Okay, so there is a small change that we need to do that. And now to put that condition, right, what I need to do, I need to go to this bstack.yml file. And here, so this is where actually I'm expecting an error, right, if my test case is failing. So what I will do, I'll put a condition here. And I will say that continue on error. It means that and is equal to true. I'll just put it as a true. It means that what I'm trying to say here, though this step is getting an error, you don't worry about that, but you continue executing the next steps, whether it is one or two steps, whatever the steps are there, you continue executing that. Okay, now let's do one thing. Let me push this particular YML file changes into there. Okay, now while doing that, I we will do two more things actually here. Like in our previous session, we have discussed, right? How do we really handle the secrets? Like if you see that at this moment, like all the secrets are covered into this only as an open actually the user and key. Now the main problem is that when I'm taking this code to my GitHub, everybody can see this user and key. Or let's say that any kind of app credentials that you are sharing it. But normally what happens certain credentials, certain license or the user privileges are with respect to your individuals. May not be your teammate will be having the same user and key. Now you want them to enter dates. Now when you are putting this hard coded one into the GitHub, now you allow others to use your credentials, which is not really a correct behavior. It means that we always tend to remove this hard coded ones and make it as flexible so that everyone can add their credentials. Now for this, we will be using a concept called dot env. Now this is a npm library. Now, if you see that the details it is saying it is allowing you to create a dot env file into your local. Okay. And whatever the key value pair that you are entering inside that, right, you can get that by using the process dot env. Now we have seen this process dot env. You can even get this user value or this key value pair from your command directly. 
like whenever you are running npm run wdio space you can put this one also now the same facility your dot env is also providing so that is what i'm going to use it now this is storing your credentials in local the later part of the session we will see how do we store it into the github also first thing is that i'll just go to this and i will just copy paste this one now this will create a dependency into my package.json as simple as that now the next thing is that i will be creating a .env file now let's say that i'm just creating a file as .env now inside this i will be storing these two things one is browser stack here okay now the thing is that how to access this one into this particular configuration so, so i'll just copy paste this entire thing okay and now no more hard coded ones i'll just take it like this okay now here how do i pick it up from this dot env so there is an option you have to take this one actually so just go here and you require dot env config now what will happen whenever i'm assigning process dot env dot something right it will be picking it up from here if your dot env file is not present then it will look from here actually npm run wdio i'm taking it right now here if i'm specifying this let's say that i'm specifying this one okay equal to i'm taking some value here okay now at this moment i have set it up now it is very unique to me only but then now when i will be pushing this particular code right the dot env file also will be going along with that which i don't want actually so what i'm going to do i'll put that into my dot git ignore file okay now when i'm saving it and you can see that this got disabled and it is not appearing in my commit list or the staging list to stage it now that is the benefit now what will happen let's say that this particular code you are sharing it with your team members now your team members cannot access your credentials they have to create their own dot env file and assigning these variables now what are the different variables you want to have it you can put it as a readme file so that any new team member they can understand what exactly they need to follow before executing their code base fair enough okay now see when i am pushing this code right this won't execute in my github actions why because now this particular config file right will be looking for the browser stack username and access key now i need to set it up into the github actions also your team member can have the dot env file separately once they will pull the code but what about the github actions that also need this particular key value pair right now for this if i go to my what do you call this github actions right and you go to your repo like the the source code repo you go to the settings now this setting is very specific to your particular project repository only now if you scroll down you see something called as secrets now you click on this action secret go for this new repository secret don't go for the environments environment is that when you want to keep like for your qa staging prod specific to that if you are taking any kind of secrets then you will be specifying we'll see some other time but at this moment let's keep it very straightforward now just click on this new secret and you go for browser stack username now this browser stack username should be this one see at this moment because i have only one account i will do that normally in real time what happens your administrator will have access to this settings you as a team member or as a developer you might not have access to this one maybe some administrator will have that access you just need to tell them hey you know you have to add this username or the key and value pair now they might have a different username and password for your browser stack okay now i am adding one secret now the second one i am going to add for the key also right now this is my key because i have already added before it is coming at a 
it has auto suggested you can give even any name also there is no problem but make sure whatever name you are specifying here that should be placed exactly same thing and also your env file also should contain the same variable name so that it can be sync across different platforms okay now the access key i will be getting it from here and then put it here add secret okay so now the next thing is that see now that particular secrets are actually with respect to your repository right now how does we fetch these particular what you call the secrets from there to my code actually i think that is the big question right because so it means that i need to assign some value to this from where from the repository now that is what i'm going to do from the github actions okay now github action will act as a mediator between your the secrets that i have located into my repository and this will be in turn going to my configuration see we know right this is nothing but this in turn goes to my configuration file it means that before to that i will be reading those variables from the secrets and then will pass it to the process.env now how do we get from the github secrets to the process.env let's see that so here what i am going to do i'll write two things here i'll put something called as environment here okay so now here i'll just put the same and i will put here now this is my environment now in this environment i am going to put two variables okay now i'll put like this tab and then i'll take these two things one is this one and then the second thing is the, my access key okay and here and i will put a colon now how do i access the secrets actually into this now there is a way actually what we can do we can have this syntax actually so dollar and then double curly brackets now i will say secrets now these secrets are nothing but whatever i have entered into the github repository and now the variable name also i maintained the same so i will be putting like this now the same way i will do another one see now whatever the environment is coming right this environment variables can be picked up into the code repository as process.env so there are three different ways that we can get the data into this process.env one is if you are in local you can get it by using the .env if you are if you are if you don't have the .env you can pass this two variables from your command prompt and when you are running from the github actions you can use the github secrets and then by using this into the github actions workflow see this particular environment and adding those secrets into the github repository is specific to your github action triggering only pretty much everything is done now now if everything goes fine then we should be able to execute from our local and also github now the first thing let's try to execute this from our local just to make sure that this dot env really working fine or not okay now to take this one what i'm going to do i will be running this particular wdio conf beat stack from my local uh, what you call command prompt actually here now instead of uh, this wdio simply now this command wdio colon b stack will be going to my configuration file this configuration need this two key pair okay and that is coming from the dot env now let's enter it and then let's go to my uh, browser stack and you can see that two workers are running and now it should update here let me refresh here and you can see that two of five is running and you can see that because we were running in two categories so two capabilities we have right into the browser stack and that is what it is running here okay now we will see how we can execute from the github actions now to do that first i need to push all these changes to my 
github workflow actually you can see i have added these things package.json because this should take my env and now the configuration file is now only holding the process.env and then the yml file including the changes with this error actually because i need to successfully even create the uh, artifact also so i am committing and adding all the changes to here sync changes so this will now push my b stack what do you call branch into my github repository and now if i come back here go to my b stack and you can see that the commit happened successfully and because the commit is pushed to this particular branch it should trigger an action actually here and you can see that here b stack with credentials now let's see what is the error it is coming not sure if this really triggered i think some failure happened let's see what is that okay line 24 there is some problem now let's see what is the issue oh you know what the spellings are correct incorrect actually so s e c r e t s and this is also e t s secrets you can see now let's push this let's go to the actions and now you can see that it should run successfully and if there is no issues will be coming it should even create the artifacts as well And you can see that uh, all these errors came but by giving these errors you can see that uh, the artifact also gone successfully run and you can see the build got succeeded though the test cases got failed it doesn't really impact our what you call the artifact creation now if you just uh, click on this this should download the zip file you can just save it and open it and now if you go to this index file and open it with the safari browser or any browser doesn't matter you should see the execution report here you can even see into your browser stack the execution report as well here so that is how you can trigger it so there is some issue with the test case but your github actions should trigger the test execution and then redirected the tests to your browser stack browser stack executed the test cases properly okay hope this session is helpful do subscribe to this youtube channel we will be seeing some more interesting topics in our upcoming sessions so stay tuned thank you for watching